Good morning and happy Monday. You're listening to WDBX Radio, and this is Talk of the Town. I'm Amy Fox. I'm the Public Relations Officer for the City of Carbondale, and I'm joined by Mr. Gary Williams, the Carbondale City Manager. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. It is a Monday, let me tell you. It is. It's, it's, the day is still young, but... Um, it's definitely felt like Monday, and we have some special guests here from Carbondale Community Arts. We have Lisa Jansen, the director, and then we also have some students in here, Amina, John, and Garrett. So thank you all for joining us this morning, bright and early. <laughs> well, thank you for having us. And we'll start with Lisa. Just tell us a little bit about what you guys kind of have going on over at Carbondale Community Arts uh, this summer. Sure. Well, um, I'll just talk a little bit about how Carbondale Community Arts came to be. First of all, for those who, who don't know, um, it all started with two artists, Kathy Sanjabi and Bonnie Moreno, um, who had the idea to start a collective group of artists um, to support activities in the region. Um, and they formed uh, a group to present a multi-arts festival um, called Arts and Celebration. So it was every other year, this group for many years organized um, performances um, and arts demonstrations, artist booths that took place in um, parks throughout Carbondale. Mm -hmm. um, and that started in uh, 1987. The group gathered together and they presented the first Arts and Celebration in 1988. Um, that program lasted until 2005. So Carbondale Community Arts has been around since 1987, um, working in the community. Um, over the years, we became a local arts agency and work closely with the Illinois Arts Council Agency. Um, we have a re-granting program to grant funds to artists um, for projects that they do in the community um, to provide access to the arts. Um, we work on special projects. We give two different awards every year, um, an Arts Legacy Award uh, to individuals in the community who've had a real impact on the arts through their work uh, over you know, their lifetimes, as well as a Keeping Arts in Business Award um, to different businesses in the community who promote the arts and or you know, ho host arts exhibits in their, in their businesses. And that's presented at the Chamber of Commerce annual banquet every year. Um, we partner with many other community organizations on different projects and collaborate on programming. Um, we also design and deliver our own arts programming. Um, we present visual arts in the Corridor Gallery in City Hall um, and also in our own space, Art Space 304, which is a fairly new space in downtown Carbondale. Um, it's actually just across University from City Hall in the Civic Center. It's at 304 West Walnut Street. So we have a gallery space there. Um, we have a media and performance gallery where we have um, musical performances and film screenings and lectures. Um, that's, we've been in that space since October 2015. So we're coming up on our third birthday fairly soon here. Um, it was originally the public library in Carbondale before um, it moved to the location on Monroe Street where it is today. Um, so we were able to receive an anonymous gift to purchase the building and did a lot of fundraising to renovate the space. Um, and it's a really, it's a beautiful space for downtown Carbondale and, and for the arts. Um, you have an event, I think. You have some going on this week, right? We have, we have several events. Um, we have Actually, this evening, we have a film screening, um, which is a, a kickoff party that's presented in collaboration with WSIU. Um, it's their online PBS online film festival. Um, and this festival works with different um, local PBS stations um, to find films to present in an online format. And WSIU um, worked with the Mass Communications and Media Arts um, college at SIU uh, to submit a film by one of their graduates, uh, Kalechi Agwancha, who will be presenting, they'll be presenting her film this evening. Um, they'll be do we'll be doing a Skype talk with the artist. Um, she graduated in May and she's up in Chicago now. She actually has a job interview today, so wish her luck on that. Um, but we'll be doing a live talk with her, screening her film, and then screening some of the other films that are part of the PBS Online Film Festival. It, it opens today, and you can watch it online. Um, if you just go to WSIU.org, you can find out more about, about that program. So that'll be this evening from 5 to 7. Um, that event is free and open to the public. Um, we also have another 
free public event on Thursday. We have our Sandwiches and Strings program, um, which is a third Thursday noontime concert series um, that occurs year round. Uh, it started just, it was the, the concept of um, two artists who are working in the community. Um, musicians, Skip Cutting, who is a classical guitarist, and Ken Wahlberg, who is a violinist and runs Heartstrings Studios. Um, that's located in the First Christian Church on Monroe Street. His, his music studio is there. He um, has Suzuki violin classes, does some um, youth and adult classes in his studio. Um, so the two of them collaborated to um, you know, find different performing artists who perform on, on string instruments, and we pre present that in the gallery um, on the third Thursday of every month. And you just bring and, your lunch. I think. And you can bring your lunch, yeah. yep. You just bring your lunch, and or you can, you know, uh, call one of the you know, downtown restaurants and have them deliver it to you at, at Art Space 304. So we are looking forward to that. Uh, this Thursday will be students who are part of the Heartstring Studios. They'll be performing just a, a selection of um, compositions for strings. Um, so that's a really fun program that we've we've been presenting since last October. And obviously there's a lot to do with Carbondale Community Arts, but why focus so much attention on the arts here in Carbondale? Well, there's just, there's so many artists. Um, it's such a creative place. It's just, um, you know, through our, our building that we have now, um, we kind of see it as a way to, to gather um, artists who are working in a variety of media. Um, as a matter of fact, the Sandwiches and Strings program, um, you know, Skip really wanted to present it at our space so that people could enjoy the visual arts and the performing arts, um, you know, all in one sort of during one event. Um, so I think, I mean, the arts are for everyone. I really strongly believe that. Um, if you are curious, um, that's really, you know, where the arts start. It's not about being able to, you know, to draw realistically, but just um, to be open to um, other people's ideas. Um, arts can help us solve problems. Um, they can show, you know, uh, the things that are beautiful. Um, they have, you know, just a really wide variety of applications. Um, it's what makes us human, really. And it's always important to get kids interested in art at a young age. And Absolutely. that's um, one of the things that the All Southern High School Theater Project is known for. Yes. Um, so it was actually the idea of two Carbondale Community High School students um, back in 1997. So we are in our 22nd year of the program. Um, but back in 1997, two students had the idea to do a summer musical. They saw that there really wasn't um, that sort of opportunity for um, kids their age in the region. So they made a proposal to CCA uh, to kind of undertake this program, and our board of directors was um, all in favor and support of the program, and that's where it really started. Um, the Secret Garden was the first uh, musical that was presented. It was presented at the high school and had um, all student cast, a student orchestra, and worked with um, you know the advice of a retired uh, theater professor from SIU. And over the years, uh, the program has really grown and grew into a collaboration with the SIU Department of Theater and their summer stock series, McLeod Summer Playhouse, where they bring pro uh, professional performing artists from um, throughout the U.S. and professional scenic designers and costume designers, um, lighting and sound technicians, um, to present a series of musicals over the summer at McLeod Playhouse. Um, so it was a really great way to um, give students the opportunity to work with professional artists, um, to present this professional caliber production, um, and also to see a little bit about what um, the Department of Theater at SIU might have to offer them. Um, so we have three student cast members right, yes. with us. And I guess, first of all, just tell us what you have going on this summer. Yeah, so um, I'm Garrett, and this summer we um, are doing Once Upon a Mattress, 
And we only started, um, not we had a full week last week and then two days before that, the Thursday and Friday. But we've only been in rehearsal for about seven days and we have pretty much the entire show done. So um, this is my fifth year with CCA and the uh, All Southern High School Theater Project. So I've been here for several years and uh, quite honestly, it's there's nothing that's like the best experience you can get in southern illinois there's there's really no other theater alternative for high school students to come together like um john and amina i've you know they're not from the same school so there's really not a lot of opportunity to you know work with them other than cca and mcleod so it's a really great and fun experience and memorizing all those lines that yeah. seems like the most difficult part of everything yeah 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 um our director is is very awesome she's great to work with and they push us but they also understand that we're human and it, and it takes time to learn lines but they push us in a healthy way that um because they know we can do it so it's um really fun to it's a challenge but it's always fun and then also we have John here. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about your experience and what's your favorite part. Yeah, so hey, I'm John. This is my first year, actually. A newbie. <laughs> yes, a newbie, first time. So it's been a really crazy experience since it's kind of my first professional theater. And it's really, it's interesting to see how different aspects of it work together. And I think it's my favorite part about it, seeing how with the scene design and the costume design, works with their directing and how that affects each and every single character and every actor and every song. And it's interesting to see how the way one person sees something can affect how the entire musical works together as a whole. And is this something you're wanting to do year after year now? Oh, definitely. <laughs> it's first time, but definitely not the last. And why should other uh, students your age um, participate? Well, you gain so many different skills in a musical. You can, gain, you can gain different skills in you know, acting, character development, you can get in singing and dancing. and It's really interesting to see how all of us have grown throughout, uh, as a community sort of, throughout the course of the musical, whether it be in our singing skills or our interpretation of lines and whatnot. Great, and last but not least, Amina. Hello. How many years have you been involved? This is my second year with the McLeod Summer Playhouse Productions, so so too um yeah last year we did singing in the rain that was that was so much fun and i remember thinking oh my gosh i'm definitely going to do this next year um and but, if you could just tell us a little bit briefly about once upon a mattress if someone's not familiar with that show yeah okay so um the musical it's about a prince who has a mother who is very uptight about him being married but the entire village and everybody that lives there wants the prince to get married because they can't get married until he does so this well you'll have to come see it but this princess eventually comes and you know hopefully solves everybody's problems you'll have to come see it but um it's uh it's it's a good it's a good show it's it's a comedy um, it's very funny. <laughs> um, there's a lot of singing and a lot of dancing. Um, I'd have to say out of most of the musicals I've been in, I think, so far this one has the most songs. It's a really, it's, it's really intense, you know? There's a lot of dancing, um, a lot of movement, a lot of energy. Everybody putting it on is working really hard. And again, it's one of, it's, as Garrett said, it's one of the most, like, professional experiences that high schoolers can get around Carbondale, so. And what's your favorite part about being involved? Um, <clears throat> probably just, just, just rehearsal, you know, just, like, being there, just so put. It's a real family. Atmosphere. Yeah, just putting it together, putting this play together with all these different people and seeing all their different talents and you know putting to use all my different talents it just yeah everything really you, you guys also have invested <laughs> a lot of time in this right yes it's from nine to five we have nine to five rehearsals every day and yeah definitely <laughs> so it's obviously something that you're all very passionate about because you wouldn't be giving in um you know your time off from school yeah. and sleeping in of course mm -hmm, yeah <laughs> so it must be pretty rewarding yes definitely show week is very very rewarding you know getting to dress up put on all the makeup perform in front of everybody you know be in the spotlight it's it's great it's a great feeling 
And if people would like to learn more about Carbondale Community Arts or even um, the McLeod Summer Playhouse, um, how can people learn more and stay up to date on all of your events that you guys put on? Well, uh, folks can visit Carbondale Community Arts website, uh, carbondalearts.org. And I will say that uh, the performances of Once Upon a Mattress will be at the end of this month at McLeod Summer Playhouse, so July 26th through the 29th. We also have an opening night dinner on the 26th that will be at Art Space 304. Um, the cast will be giving some special performances and we're just really going to celebrate them uh, bef right before they open the show. But um, it's, I'm always just astounded every year at the talent um, of the youth in our region. And um, so it, I, I know I, I won't be disappointed again this year. I think every year gets better and better and it's just... Um, it's just a great program for these for these youth. So great. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, Lisa, John, Garrett, Amina. Try to remember everyone's name. <laughs> we hope all of you have a great day, and um, hopefully, we'll be able to chat with you soon. Yes. Thanks so much. Thanks. Good luck. And we're going to take a short break and get to some announcements, and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Good morning, this is Alicia with the City of Carbondale here to bring you this week's calendar of events. On Friday, July 20th, 2018, the Varsity presents The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is now considered one of the greatest films of all time. Tickets are $5 and are available in advance at www.thevarsitycenter.org The show begins at 7 p.m. For more information on this event, please call 618-457-5353. And on Saturday, July 21st, 2018, it's Fresh Fitness. The City of Carbondale and the Carbondale Park District had teamed up to host fitness classes every Saturday in the month of July. Classes will be held from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Turley Park. Experience is not required. Please wear comfortable clothes and bring a water bottle, towel, or yoga mat. A cash donation of $5 is suggested. Please call 618-559-1939 for more information. And on Sunday, July 22nd, 2018, the Varsity Center presents an evening of music and film by acclaimed Southern Illinois filmmaker Dan Johnson and international award-winning percussionist Kevin Lucas. Doors open at 7 p.m. And for more information, go to www.kevinlucasorchestra.com. For information on these events and others, please visit our website at wdbx.org or carbondeltourism.org, or you can reach us by phone at 618-457-3228. Thank you, and have a great week. Good morning and happy Monday. You're listening to Talk of the Town on WDBX 91.1 FM Carbondale. I'm Amy Fox and I'm joined by Gary Williams and we are joined in studio by a special guest. We have uh, Jennifer Fries with the American Red Cross in studio this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And today we're talking about um, kind of uh, an emergency blood shortage here um, throughout uh, the region, really. Um, what types of blood specifically are you in need of? Yeah, so the Red Cross, we are facing a, it's a, actually a national blood shortage across the country. Um, a lot of it has to do uh, with the fact that 20% of the nation's blood supply comes from high school and college blood drives. When they're out of school for the summer, we're not having those blood drives. Uh, we don't see a lot of the high school and college age students coming and donating at our community drives. Um, additionally, a lot of people travel um, in the summer, go on vacations. Um, add to that the fact that more people are traveling, there's more accidents. People are, are um, out on the lakes, there's more boating accidents, so the need for blood can go up. Um, the type of blood that we need right now is every type, um, specifically O negative blood. That is the universal blood type, and anyone can receive that. O negative is used a lot of times in emergency situations. So, so if you do have O negative blood, we really need you to come out right now. And what is the process like um, <clears throat> if someone wants to participate in a blood drive and they've never given blood before? I know sometimes people get a little bit squeamish about donating, but kind of walk us through that process. Walk us through those steps. Yeah, so um, we like to say it's the easiest way to save someone's life. 
Um, the entire process takes about 45 minutes to an hour of your time. When you go in to donate blood, our staff will do a little mini physical on you. They'll check your blood pressure, your temperature, your pulse rate, your iron level, just to make sure you're healthy enough that day to donate. Then you'll answer a series of questions on the computer about your health history. Um, if you've passed all those tests, then the actual donation part takes about five to ten minutes. Um, you know, where you've got the, the needle in your arm and you're donating the pint of blood. Afterwards, we like for people to stay about 15 minutes to have some juice and cookies just to make sure they're feeling okay. So um, it really is is pretty quick and easy. And if you've never done it before, I definitely encourage someone to come out and try. Um, they say that 98% of us will know someone or need blood ourselves at some point in our lives. So this is definitely a, a great way to pay it forward. And, and you do really help up to three hospital patients every time you donate blood. And after um, someone gives the pint of blood, does that donation stay in Illinois or in Mm -hmm. the region, or does it get transported across the country? Yeah, so locally, if we would have a blood drive here today in Carbondale, after the blood drive, um, our blood is first sent back to Cape Girardeau, where our um, center is based out of that covers the blood drives here. Then we send the blood up to our National Testing Laboratory in St. Louis. There they run a a variety of tests on it just to make sure that it is safe to go to hospital patients. Um, After it's tested, they separate the blood into three different components, platelets, plasma, and red blood cells. Um, Those three components can be used on three different hospital patients. And then, yes, we send the blood out to the area hospitals in this this region, Um, you know, all the ones here in Jackson County, would end up getting it. I can't specifically say that if you donate in Carbondale, your blood will end up back in Carbondale. It, it'll it stay within this area, but it also could um, potentially um, say, for instance, I, I like to use, you know, the example of um, the Vegas shootings. Anytime there's a mass casualty event like that, if we have supplied the, the hospitals here locally with what they need, then we're able to ship that blood to other parts of the country as well. Interesting. And um, we've talked a little bit about the need for these donations. Where can people donate? Um, We have a lot of blood drives here in the area. Um, Every two seconds, someone needs a blood transfusion. So that's why you might see that we do have a lot of blood drives. Um, People can always go to our website at redcrossblood.org and just type in their zip code and it'll pop up with um, a list of blood drives in the area. Uh, Specifically, we do have some coming up this week here in the Carbondale area. On Friday, we'll be at Center for Medical Arts on our bus from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, then next week, next Tuesday, we'll be at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church here in Carbondale from 2 to 6. So we're, we're having them all over the place. And um, like I said, if you just want to go to our website or call 1-800-RED-CROSS, they can tell you where. And during the blood drives, does someone need to make an appointment or can they just show up on lunch hour and mm-hmm. donate that way? Yeah, we prefer that people make appointments um, just in case they you know, are in a hurry and we don't want everyone showing up at the very beginning because it'll take our staff a while to process through everyone and then you might have to wait. But certainly if you don't know what your schedule is going to be on a certain day and you just want to walk in, that is perfectly fine. Um, Just know that if someone would have an appointment, they would, you know, get precedence over you when they come into the drive. So, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Gary. Do Uh do you guys have, um, you mentioned a couple different locations. Do you you guys look for locations? If there's businesses, organizations out there that might have a space and are Mm -hmm. interested, can they get in touch with you? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually my job. Um, I cover Jackson County uh, here in Illinois. And so each month I have a specific number of um, either a goal or, or commitments to the hospital that we've promised them this amount of blood. And then my job is to make sure that we have enough um, blood drive scheduled to reach that hospital commitment. Um, they can certainly contact me. Um, my Would you like my email address and phone number? Okay. My, my email address is Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, the period symbol dot freeze, F-R-E-E-Z-E at redcross.org. Um, my phone number is area code 573-979-2878. So, yes, if someone is interested in sponsoring a blood drive at their location, I'm more than happy to work with them. And um, if someone's just now joining us, uh, we're talking about a blood blood shortage across the country. Um, what blood type specifically are you looking for? 
Yeah, all blood types right now are definitely needed. Um, that's the A's, B's, and O's. Um, o negative is the type of blood that can be transfused to any hospital patient. So that one specifically is needed because if there was an emergency situation where someone would have been in a bad car accident and needed blood right then and there, doctors don't have the time to test what type of blood they they are. So that patient would automatically get O negative blood. Um, anyone that does have O negative blood can also only receive O negative blood. So if there's um, a cancer patient who's going through Um, you know, treatment for leukemia, they might need red blood cell transfusions and the only type of blood they can receive is O negative. So um, like I said, all types are needed, but specifically O negative right now. And, you know, it may take someone 30 minutes or 45 minutes um, from their lunch hour or even, you know, during their personal time, but that small amount of time can really change someone's life. Right, yeah, and a lot of people don't realize just all the patients that do end up needing blood. They say that one in every 10 hospital patients will need a blood transfusion while they're in the hospital, and it can be all ages. Um, I have a friend who had a newborn baby that was born anemic, and the baby received um, some, some red blood cell transfusions right after they were born. Um, it could be a cancer patient, like I said. Uh, cancer patients, when they go through chemotherapy treatments, the chemo um, affects their body in a lot of ways. In addition to killing off the cancer cells, it doesn't allow their body to produce enough platelets sometimes. So cancer patients are actually the number one users of platelet products from the, the blood donation. So um and, you know, people going through surgeries can need it. Um, just a variety of, of different patients will end up needing a, a blood transfusion. And the summer is typically a little bit slower as well as the holidays, just with people on vacation and kind of off their normal routine. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, the, the high school and college students make up about 20% of the na- nation's blood supply. And we see an 80% decline in donation from that age group during the summer months and the winter months around the holidays. Um, in addition, people do like to travel, um, go on vacation during that time. So they might miss a blood drive in their community. Um, and, and also a lot of people might schedule surgeries around this time because they're, you know, off work or have vacation time they can use. So, so in addition to seeing fewer donors at our, our drives, um, the need for blood actually goes up around this time of year as well. And I know just as, as hot as it's been, a lot of people don't like to leave the comfort of their, their air conditioned homes and, and get out maybe after they get off work. But, um, our blood drives are air conditioned so they can come in and, and donate blood in the cool air. So. And you have a variety of locations, both here in Carbondale and the surrounding communities. So where can people go to get more information about these upcoming blood drives? Yeah, so our website is probably the best place to go, um, redcrossblood.org, and just type in their zip code, and they can find one. We do have a lot of, um, someone can donate blood actually every 56 days or about every two months, and we have a lot of regular uh, groups that like to partner with us to have them every two months, like the Carbondale Hospital does here. Um, they they have a blood drive every two months. Over in Murfreesboro, the American Legion actually has one this Wednesday, and they, they run every two months. So um, we do have a lot of regular blood drives in the area, but definitely uh, either call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit our website, redcrossblood.org. Great. Lots of good information and definitely a dire need for blood donations right now. So if you're able to give, um, definitely go on that website to, to get more information. Um, Jennifer Fries with the American Red Cross, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. No problem. And that does it for Gary and I. We hope you'll listen next Monday at 10 a.m. for Talk of the Town. We're going to take a short break and have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Support comes from Southern Illinois Healthcare, offering the Heron Hospital Joint Camp Program, which educates patients and their families about joint replacement surgery and provides therapy during recovery. Details at sih.net.